In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. <laughs> It seems that Pete Davidson has finally moved on out of his mom's basement. A few years back, the comedian purchased a $1.3 million Staten Island house for his mom, Amy Waters, and was living in the basement up until he purchased his current home earlier this year. Pete upgraded himself into a two-bedroom Staten Island skyrise that cost him $1.2 million and boasts views of New York City and plenty of natural light. Today, we're going to take a look at his New York residences. Pete Davidson is a comedian, actor, screenwriter, and more who's well known for being on Saturday Night Live. As a cast member on SNL, it's said he earns about 15k to 25k per episode, and he also makes money from his other endeavors. At the time, his estimated net worth is at about $8 million. Recently, Pete's been hogging the headlines due to his new romance with Kim Kardashian. So while he may start spending more time with Kim at her minimalistic Hidden Hills mansion, he does have a crib of his very own. And it's not his mom's basement. In spring of 2021, it was reported that Pete was upgrading his living situation with the purchase of a new condo. While he revealed he fully moved out of his mom's basement, he remained close to home with the purchase of a luxury apartment in his native Staten Island, New York. York for $1.2 million. It appears to be quite the change of living situation. At the time, the comedian said he found a place of his own during a TikTok chat. He said, I just moved out of my mom's house, he said as he entered his new apartment. I'm fully out, I got a pad. In Pete's defense, at least he did also purchase that home for his mother Amy back in 2019 and it cost him $1.3 million. Pete's deluxe apartment in the sky boasts 1,592 square feet of space with two beds and two and a half baths throughout. The building is located on the water and offers impressive views of Manhattan, so you never feel like you're too far away. It includes a handful of lavish amenities like high ceilings, hardwood floors, and massive windows for perfect lighting. The main living area is open plan and boasts a kitchen, dining room, and living room in a sprawling space. At the time of sale, many of the walls were painted a pale purple color, but my guess is that Pete's changed the look since moving in. The kitchen has been completely redesigned to offer peninsula seating area, perfect for hosting small gatherings, as well as quartz waterfall countertops and updated appliances. This space expands into the dining area and living room, where there's a small nook that could double as an office. Since the dining room is open, it makes it easy to entertain and hang out with whoever comes to visit. Just the hallway away, you'll find Pete's master suite where he's no doubt enjoying the comforts of home. The ensuite nearby includes a marble vanity, a jacuzzi tub, a shower, and elsewhere, there's a walk-in closet for his collection of clothes and sneakers. A convenient door in the master bedroom opens up to the private terrace, which boasts scenic views and plenty of space. There's also a table set up here for alfresco dining and overlooking the city. Listing materials show the extra bedroom in the apartment set up for kids with bunk beds, but it can be configured as a guest room, of course. If that's not enough, the amenities in Pete's building include everything from secured dormant entry to a residence lounge, fitness center, a children's playground, as well as grilling stations. In 2019, Pete decided to buy a home with his mom, Amy Davidson, instead of first buying a place for himself. His younger sister also lives there, and the living arrangement was never a secret. The comedian mentioned it a number of times while filming SNL or in interviews, even making some great jokes out of it. According to real estate records, Pete and his mom paid $1.3 million for their home, also located in Staten Island, and the abode offers four beds and four full baths throughout. There's also a private master wing and a custom kitchen. There's a cozy living room when you walk in the multi-level house, offering a brick fireplace and hardwood floors, while the eating kitchen has stainless steel appliances and more. The grand entryway is one of the most impressive spots at the property, as there's a giant stained glass skylight overhead and a curved staircase. Pete said in the past about his unconventional living situation, We bought a house together, but nobody believes that. I live with my mom, kinda, so I have like a basement that's like mine, that's like an apartment, so I live underneath her. So I'm getting like a little arcade set up down there, trying to make it mine. He's even offered glimpses into his basement apartment and given a full tour. The setup was pretty impressive for a simple basement and Pete had a large closet area set up with backlights, his own kitchen, a spacious bedroom and more. There was plenty of room to entertain with a TV equipped bar and living room. He even had his own office down there. 
During his mini house tour, he made sure to point out his SpongeBob sweatshirt, his alien named Kevin, his dustbuster, and things that were special to him. It seems like only yesterday we reported on Kanye's new architectural Malibu home, but it appears that he just made the news for another real estate purchase. This time, the rapper has bought a completely unremarkable crib for $4.5 million, but here's the kicker, it's directly across the street from his ex-wife Kim Kardashian's home, the ultra-modern compound the estranged couple once shared. In comparison to that mansion, Kanye's new purchase is totally unimpressive, spending 3,600 square feet of space with pretty outdated interiors, but today we're going to take a look. Kanye West is a rapper, singer, songwriter, record producer, businessman, and more, who's been a major influence in 21st century hip hop and pop culture. It's no doubt then that he's one of the world's best selling music artists who's also amassed an estimated net worth of $1.8 billion. Kanye also tends to be a man of his word and when he has inspiration he takes action quickly. Just the other month he made a surprise announcement claiming he had plans to get his family back together, which also means his estranged wife Kim Kardashian. He also added that if he couldn't live in the family home, he would quote, buy the home right next door. He may not have got the home next door, but he did snag the one directly across the street, which is pretty damn close. From here, Kanye can keep an eye on the kids and Kim herself. If you watch this channel, you'd know that Kim and Kanye spent years and millions of dollars constructing their unique, empty looking, and massive Hidden Hills estate, but in October 2021, Kim paid Kanye $23 million to buy out his share of the property. And his new place, well, let's just say it isn't even in the same league. It seems that Kanye wasn't bluffing when he said he would buy the house next door to his ex-wife Kim if he couldn't move back in with them. And even though he recently bought himself a new Malibu mansion, he's actually now bought a house across the street from Kim's compound in Hidden Hills. Located in the exclusive guard-gated community of Hidden Hills, a neighborhood set in the Santa Monica Mountains, and known for being home to many actors and celebrities, Kanye's new purchase sits on just over an acre of land. The fact that it's directly across the street from the the old Kimye compound has got to be the only reason why Kanye bought it. Because, well, despite its $4.5 million price tag, it's relatively unimpressive. His modest bachelor pad pales in comparison to their marital compound built in 1955 and owned by the same family ever since, with little to no modern updates throughout. The house is a single level ranch style abode with a spacious 3,600 square feet, 5 beds, and 3.5 baths. Kanye's new property does have a perfectly maintained grassy lawn out front, along with gardens and landscaping, but once inside, the home is certainly outdated. Given Kanye's passion for architecture and design, his Malibu house being created by a legendary Japanese designer, and the former family mansion fully decked out in a super minimalistic and artsy vibe, we can assume the rapper will get this home completely before setting a date to move in. I mean, Kanye's vision was a huge part of designing the former family compound where Kim's living, and he worked alongside some of the most exclusive designers to make his dream home come to life. We just can't see him settling for this. Regardless, Kanye really wanted this new house, paying 421 k over asking to secure it. Despite the age decker in the house, the property looks like it was well taken care of. And that beautiful grass out front, well reportedly, that's recently installed AstroTurf, which is good for water bills and keeping it look good during the hot LA summers. Much easier maintenance. Walking in the yellow home, many of the interiors boast wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, including the common rooms at the front, one living area boasting a full wall stone fireplace across from a massive window. There's also a wooden clad great room with double height beam ceilings on one half, a brick fireplace and sliding doors out to the pool. Here, there's also some curtains that look like they could be decades old. The kitchen in Kanye's new investment was remodeled back in 2005, which is better than nothing, and offers a large island, granite counters, and basic white appliances. I'm sure those will all be traded in for top of the line stainless ones in no time though. Some of the bathrooms in the home have a definite 80s vibe one of which we can see is painted in a strange pale shade of green. Also on Kanye's property, there's a humble sized guest studio with another bedroom and full bathroom attached to the garage and good to use as staff quarters. I gotta say looking outside and seeing the horse stables complete with some cute horses inside, that made me like the place a lot more. If only they came with the property. 
The terrace backyard also boasts an oversized swimming pool located directly outside the main living room. Let's not forget that just a few months ago, Kanye also purchased an architectural style home in Malibu. Since Kanye paid a visit to Naoshima, the Japanese art island designed by award-winning architect Tadeo Ando, the rapper has been obsessed. He claimed this art was life-changing and once upon a time, even said he wanted to live inside a sculpture. This property is as close as one could get to living inside a sculpture. Kanye dropped a massive $57.3 million in an off-market deal for this new Malibu crib, which is only one of a few properties designed by the fame architect located in the US. Kanye's boxy style abode seems to be right up his alley with its minimalistic and eccentric design. The house was first offered at $75 million last year, so it appears the rapper actually got a deal on the place, purchasing it off of finance mogul Richard Sachs, also known as the ex-boyfriend of Ashley Olsen. While Sachs lived here, he dropped millions of dollars in seven years of his time to plan and construct this unique three-story home that looks like a military bunker to say the least. Reportedly, the building required 1,200 tons of poured concrete, 200 tons of steel reinforcement, and 12 pylons stuck 60 feet deep into the ground to support the massively heavy house and to avoid it sinking into the sand. While the concrete home was designed by a famous architect, fans don't seem to be impressed. One person on Instagram wrote, Kanye living in a parking garage, while another said his new residence, quote, looks like a high-end bunker for a cult leader. Newlywed couple Travis Barker and Kourtney Kardashian recently opened up the doors of their luxury home for a tour. Travis took fans inside his longtime Calabasas mansion for Architectural Digest, and he recently gave the home a mega redesign, boasting a peaceful and modern aesthetic. He lives here with his three children, and now his wife Kourtney and her three children, so it's become quite the impressive family home for all. Not to mention, when the pair needs a vacation, they can hop on over to Kourtney's $12 million estate in Palm. Palm Springs, which she bought in 2021. Travis Barker is best known for being the famed drummer of rock band Blink-182, and now he often rules the headlines with his new wife, reality star Kourtney Kardashian. Travis may have married into the most publicized and famous family out there, and the high-profile couple now has a blended family of six children, so I mean it's no doubt that they need a sprawling estate to call home. Kourtney and Travis officially tied the knot on May 22, 2022 in Puerto Italy after holding two previous ceremonies in the US. A legal wedding on May 15th at a courthouse as well as a practice wedding in a Las Vegas chapel in April. All six of their kids were in attendance for the wedding, Courtney's sons, Mason and Rain, as well as her daughter Penelope and Travis's son Landon, daughter Alabama and stepdaughter Atiana. Travis and Courtney may live a glamorous rock star lifestyle, but his home, which they now share, is surprisingly full of tranquility, especially after the remodel. He's owned the home for 15 years, but he decided it was in need of a new look. Travis Barker's home, which he now shares with his wife Courtney Kardashian and their blended family, is a lot more tranquil than you might expect from a rock star. His mansion is located in the exclusive gated community of the Oaks in Calabasas, and he purchased it way back in 2007 for $9.5 million. Thanks to aerial shots, we can see how massive the estate is situated on 1.5 acres of land. This is the same gated community where Courtney owns her home and the lovebirds met being neighbors and friends. While Travis has owned the home for about 15 years, he decided it was time to give the place a refresh, appointing celebrity designer Walder Fernandez for the task. Travis said, I love the simplicity and zen quality of his work. When the drummer bought the home, it was newly constructed and it's a single level spanning 10,198 square feet of space. There are also seven beds and 7.5 baths throughout with features like a home theater, wine cellar, games room, and a detached guest house. In terms of his redesign, designer Waldo explained that Travis was hoping for a home that he could, quote, be at peace with himself at. Throughout the residence, there's a toned down color scheme with tailored upholstery, warm wood, and a custom mid-century inspired furnishings. There are towering ceilings in the common spaces, some of them vaulted and barreled, along with inlaid stone floors, 
Venetian plaster walls, hand-carved moldings, imported granite, and marble counters. Travis's lofty living room has a custom sofa and lounge chairs by Waldo's design firm and boasts open views out to the pool. The nearby family room also offers custom furnishings as well as a cocktail table and opens up to a covered terrace for an indoor-outdoor vibe. Once you step foot in the foyer, you get a clear view through the home right out to the backyard and pool, and there are open living spaces all around you. The modern kitchen is attached to a combo living area with roaring fireplace and wall-mounted TV, while in the kitchen itself, there are sleek black countertops, wolf wall ovens, pendant lights, a paneled sub-zero fridge, and much more. There's also a sunny breakfast nook with a chic table set into a curved wall of windows. And they added this during the redesign. Then the formal dining room has a table with enough room for Travis, Courtney, and their six children to sit around. The games room was also reimagined, and now it's dubbed the entertainment room, and it's a sprawling space with a ping pong table, a bar, and more. Elsewhere in the mansion, there's a full recording studio where Travis did his work during the pandemic too, and a comfy looking home movie theater. Travis's master suite has a sitting area in a sunny windowed nook, a fireplace, and his impressive walk-in closet. Then the attached bath has a tub made of silver travertine and waterworks fixtures. When talking about his redesigned home, Travis said, I've had homes with lots of flashy cars and murals and bikes hanging from the ceiling. But with three children of my own, plus Courtney's kids, this place felt right for this moment in my life. I wanted a house where I can rest and enjoy my family, a place where we can create memories. He also said he's making plans to convert his studio into a bunk room for Courtney's three kids so that they have more space. He also says a typical night at the Barker household is when everyone is together and ideally sharing a vegan meal, followed by puzzles and board games or just hanging out together and watching movies. Much like skateboarding and BMX racing, design has long been a part of Travis's DNA. In addition to being a co-owner of the DTA clothing brand, he recently launched a collection of skull-themed houseware and accessories, everything from drum keys to table lamps and candle holders, in collaboration with the company Buster & Punch, who also outfitted the drummer's expansive recording studio. Outside, the entertaining pavilion has a barbecue center, outdoor kitchen and fireplace, as well as the adjoining mosaic pool and spa. All of this is surrounded by rolling lawns and fountains, and there's a poolside cabana back here too. When they aren't kicking back in Calabasas, the couple can head to their vacation home, which Courtney picked up in summer 2021, a $12 million desert mansion in Palm Springs, California. Located in the gated and posh neighborhood of La Quinta, Courtney's new and modern property was newly built last year and came fully furnished. There are also six bedrooms, eight bathrooms, and over 9,000 square feet of space throughout. The mansion sits on almost an acre of land stacked with amenities and a luxury vibe, and you enter the main residence via the tranquil courtyard, which boasts a sitting area, custom water features, and a fire display. Aside from the main residence, there's also a convenient and spacious guest house on the property. The fire display from the courtyard leads into the great room, which is totally open concept. This sprawling space has high ceilings, sitting areas, a built-in modern fireplace, and much more. There are also panoramic views of the Santa Rosa Mountains and retractable glass walls that slide away to blend indoor and outdoor living. The layout makes the home ideal for Courtney to entertain friends or family, even if she and Travis are just spending time here with their kids. Not only is there a gourmet kitchen inside on the terrace, there's also a full outdoor kitchen and a barbecue station. The indoor kitchen boasts an expansive marble island, granite slab counters, and a spacious butler's pantry. Other features inside Courtney's desert mansion include a large custom bar, a wine room, and elsewhere a home office. One bedroom has a fireplace and sitting area with easy outdoor access, while most of the sleeping quarters, if not all, have en suite. Moving outside, there's the large infinity edge pool and spa, which Courtney has shown on social media, as well as a 15 hole custom golf course. That pool has got to be the statement piece of the entire property. Not only is it massive, but it's surrounded by three towering palm trees and looks directly to the snowy mountain tops in the distance. Her home is also located in the Madison Club, where the well to do residents can enjoy a variety of amenities like a private clubhouse five-star dining, state-of-the-art fitness and spa amenities, and concierge. 
Hey, it's Scott Disick. Even if you know him best as Kourtney Kardashian's ex-man and baby daddy, Scott Disick has become an honorary member of the mega-famous family over the years, despite the breakup. Scott has become a celebrity in his own right after starring on Keeping Up with the Kardashians for years while he was in a relationship with Kourtney. He remains super close with the family and is still part of the show in the goings on. However, he has his own ventures these days as well. Scott is 36 years old at the time of this recording and although the man doesn't have his own Wikipedia page anymore, he's become one of the more interesting characters on reality TV and will probably just continue to be relevant. Scott has 23 million followers on Instagram at the time of this recording and he was most famous for being with Courtney who he had three children with. Since 2017, Scott has been in a relationship with the much younger Sophia Ritchie who's like 15 years younger than him. The two do seem happy and she's close to the Kardashian Jenners too, but I'm not surprised with that family. Scott even said about his relationship with Sophia, it's hard anywhere to find someone you feel comfortable with. The truth was without her I was always looking for somebody or something. She's definitely been that little piece that's calmed me down and made me a better man and made things, you know, easier in my life. Post breakup from Courtney, Scott obviously moved out of the home in the Oaks he shared with her and had to get a new mansion in Hidden Hills. He renovated the place which we know Scott loves to do considering he began his own reality show earlier this year called Flip It Like Disick where he flips high end homes. It's been pretty good. It seems the guy is doing pretty well for himself with a net worth rumored at 20 million and you can see it all from his fancy house, cars and more that he loves to show off. Today we're going to be focusing on the mansion where Scott currently calls home and the details of his place here for you on Famous Entertainment. First of all, let's look at Scott's old real estate while he was still with Courtney. We know the two had a few epic homes together and they redesigned those ones too. The earlier house that Scott shared with Courtney was located in Calabasas, California like the rest but it was a bit smaller than what he's upgraded to since. This place was purchased back in 2010 for 1.7 million, which doesn't seem like a high asking price for the location. It was 5,400 square feet and had four beds and 4.5 baths. Apparently, the home wasn't big enough for Scott and Courtney's growing family, so they eventually decided to get a bigger place. Designer Jeff Andrews helped to completely reimagine this home and definitely made it unique. Maybe all of the work Scott and Courtney had done to their homes inspired Scott's idea for flipping houses. Back then, Scott actually described this home as Alice in Wonderland meets Beetlejuice, which I can totally see. The new design included bright colored furniture and statement pieces inside black and white rooms. Scott's office definitely had those vibes. Even the books on the shelves were color coordinated. When Scott and Courtney upgraded to a new mansion, it was in the area of the Oaks, which is also in Calabasas, just beside Hidden Hills. This place might look a little familiar because Courtney is actually still living here. Scott and Courtney got this place back in 2014 for 8.5 million. The mansion spans 12,000 square feet with six beds and nine bathrooms, so you could say that they got their wish of having a bigger family home. This place has an expansion expansive yard and pool with gorgeous views, but most of the homes in these neighborhoods do have great views of the hills. Even though the house looked fancy enough when Scott and Courtney purchased it, they flipped this place too. Unfortunately, I don't think Scott would have been able to enjoy this home much after the redesign since the couple would be calling it quits soon. Now with Scott out of the picture, Courtney has all that space for her and the kitties. Don't be fooled though, Scott's home gives this place a run for its money and you'll see what I mean now. When Scott and Courtney ended their relationship for good, of course the man needed a place to live. And if you know Scott, you know he enjoys the finer things. He wasn't about to move into a lame bachelor pad, that's for sure. And why should he? Scott had an extra house on hand that was an investment property, so apparently that was his full-time spot for a while post-split. This place was in the Beverly Park area of Beverly Hills and it was built back in 1960. It was 4,000 square feet and there were five beds, six baths and gorgeous views of the canyon, ocean and city. Moving outside there was a salt water pool and spa, a garden with a water fountain and even views of Catalina Island from the backyard. But this wasn't enough for Scott to settle into. He ended up purchasing a home in Hidden Hills close to the Kardashian Jenners, right in their fave neighborhood. Scott paid just under 6 million for the home back in January 2016 and started to flip the place pretty quickly. Scott certainly hasn't been shy about showing off his place, that's for sure. How you doing? I'm Scott Disick and welcome to my house.
His Hidden Hills home is described as partly farmhouse style and inspired by the East Coast, the Hamptons to be exact. Scott is a native New Yorker himself, so it makes sense that he would want that Hamptons feel. The place looks pretty minimalistic and doesn't have much color at all. It's a lot of white interior and wooden flooring. Comparing photos of the house pre-reno and now, you can see just how much Scott has really done to the place. Scott's home is just over 8,000 square feet of living space with 7 beds and 6.5 baths. It was built back in 1968 and is located on a private road. The master suite in this house has custom closets, a private balcony, fireplace, and more. Scott has his own personal seating area here and other add-ons for his room were pretty epic too. Scott has a massive custom 9x8 foot bed and the room has a total hotel feel. He also has a projection screen that comes down from the ceiling which acts as a wall to make the room cozier and as a personal movie theater from bed. Of course, Scott also redesigned the master bathroom to his liking and I think he made it much nicer. The whole home on the main floor is really modern looking and open concept. There's a redone kitchen, dining space, multiple living areas, and a large wine cellar tucked underneath the stairs. If you don't feel like watching movies in bed, there's another main movie theater located on the main floor. I definitely like Scott's idea of a big U-shaped couch instead of movie theater seats though because it seems way more comfy and practical. Three of the bedrooms are on the main floor and one even has sliding glass doors leading you right to the pool. Moving outside of Scott's home, he called the original kidney-shaped pool absolutely horrible and replaced it with an infinity pool. Scott did a ton of work to the outdoor area of this home and really wanted to show off the impressive views from the property. He clearly also likes to show off his multiple luxury cars and he has plenty of space for all of them at his mansion, or what he likes to call his motor court. Despite all of the efforts Scott put into making this mansion a home, it's apparently been listed on the market and he's tried to both rent it and sell it in the past. A while back, Scott was trying to rent the home for 60k a month, but I don't think he had any success. As far as I know, he's still living in his Hidden Hills mansion and it seems like Sophia and their dog Hershella are happily living there too at the time. So now we've seen Scott's old homes he shared with Courtney and his current home in Hidden Hills that he flipped and is obviously really proud of. What do you guys think of Scott's mansion? Is he a good house flipper or not? Nah? There are rumors that Scott and Sophia are looking for a new place though. The couple was shown looking for houses in Malibu on an episode of Flip It Like Disick. Apparently the two even looked at a massive house with over 19 mil that was 22,000 square feet. Either way, Sophia wants to put her own touches on a home they start together and said Scott's place was like a bachelor pad. Another day, another Kardashian-Jenner home to obsess over, or should I say home? Word is that Mama Kris Jenner has finally moved into her brand new Hidden Hills mansion, the neighboring property of her daughter Khloe Kardashian's also brand new mansion. They bought the side-by-side -side homes last year with Kris's property costing a whopping $20 million and Khloe is spending $17 million on hers. It seems that Kris's mansion is ready for living but Khloe's is still in the process, so let's take a look. Kris Jenner and her daughter Khloe Kardashian are both super successful no doubt. Chris, the self-proclaimed momager of the family, famously snags a 10% manager's fee from all of her children's projects, so it's no surprise she's worth about $190 million, making her the third richest in the family. Chloe, on the other hand, has a net worth of about $50 million. In April of 2020, Chris offloaded her former home in the same Hidden Hills neighborhood for about $15 million, and Chloe sold her Calabasas mansion for more than double what she paid in 2014 at $15.5 million. It was just reported that Chris has moved into the new $20 million mansion next to her daughter Chloe's future home. Chris now resides in an exclusive gated section in Hidden Hills, California, which neighbors Calabasas. While Chris's home is move-in ready, Chloe's is reportedly still being built. The construction of these mega mansions was documented during the building process with Chris's abode made of dark grey brickwork. Chris's new home has sprawling lawns and a grassy yard with a pool along with mature trees and other plants. Elsewhere there's solar paneling. Meanwhile, Chloe's crib has a pool house right next to the swimming pool with a large, fully grown tree replanted into the yard. 
The two mansions are located on Ashley Ridge, the pocket of Hidden Hills often considered the most desirable. Neighbors include Jeffree Star, Lori Lawlin, Demarza Rosen, and more. While we have yet to scope photos of Chloe and Chris's new home interiors, we can see how the new builds in the neighborhood look and get an idea. Chloe and Chris's new residences were built in 2020 by the same local developer and pack in over 10,000 square feet of living space each, sitting on 1.5 acres of land. While the Ashley Ridge mansions were already gorgeous, many were ripped down to make way for the new builds, which are said to be even more impressive. Each of the massive homes are built in the trendy modern farmhouse style, and the two properties were formerly parts of one single large estate that rambled over three acres of land. This mega home was once about 20,000 square feet, not to mention Britney Spears even leased a former mansion in the past. The land was previously owned by construction mogul Ron Tudor, and the former mansion was eventually torn down, leaving the property uninhabited for years. That was until Chris and Chloe got their hands on it and began to work on their homes. While Chris is moving on into that new crib in summer 2020, the momager sold her main residence in the same star-studded neighborhood of Hidden Hills for exactly $15 million in an off-market, all-cash deal. Chris bought the modern farmhouse style mansion about three years prior for just under $10 million and hired acclaimed designers Tommy and Kathy Clements, along with Waldo Fernandez, to give the home a sophisticated makeover. After this, her glamorous space was published in Architectural Digest when Chris gave them a full in-depth tour. Looking at photos of the mansion now, it seems that Chris has somehow made the place look even nicer and likely added some upgrades too. Inside, the estate spans 9,459 square feet with six beds, eight baths, rich hardwood flooring, and a lot of fresh white walls. This home boasts a glass front door that swings open into a large foyer attached to the formal living and dining rooms. The former with a fireplace and the dining room with custom furniture and a vintage credenza that Ellen DeGeneres used to own. Chris's chic chef's kitchen had an Italian marble and top of the line appliances and this space opened to the family room where she had outfitted it with a rare sheep sculpture while living here. Her former master suite was also downstairs, located in its own spacious and secluded wing with a walk-in closet and a massive bathroom decked out in more marble than you've ever seen. On the upper level of the home, there's a second family room with a wet bar, the guest suites, and a home gym. Outside, the property boasted a swimming pool, outdoor kitchen with fire pit, and rolling lawns surrounding it. While this home was stunning, I can only imagine what Chris's new mega palace will look like inside. Now let's look at Khloe Kardashian's sleek residence. In 2020, she put her longtime home on the market, and it sold for $15.5 million in an off-market deal to YouTuber and businessman Darman. That was more than double what Khloe paid six years ago. While her new mansion isn't quite ready yet and is still under construction, sources say she moved in about a year ago. If that's not the case, then the reality star is still living in a gorgeous mansion for the transition period. Either way, Chloe has been sharing glimpses of her mansion progress on Instagram, even last month in October 2021, where we can see her backyard and how the landscaping is coming along. A large iron archway was also visible and it boasts a pathway underneath. Likely in the near future, this will be covered in greenery or floral plants once completed, and close by, construction was also being done on Chloe's backyard pool. The yard also has mature trees lining a serene walkway behind the home, while the property is also super private. In terms of the specs of Chloe's new abode, it reportedly offers eight bedrooms, 9.5 baths, and every amenity you could ever imagine. There's an eight car garage, covered patios, guest house, movie theater, lounge, home gym, and office. Also outside, there's of course that beautiful pool with inset spa. Whether it's this newly built home in the works or a temporary home in the meantime, it seems Chloe and her daughter True have been making memories in a stunning home either way. Based on the star's social media posts, she has access to a home gym, spacious kitchen, and much more. Last Christmas, Chloe uploaded a series of pics and videos, giving fans a glimpse inside her festive upgrade. Her Christmas tree was tall and decorated with silver and green ornaments with sparkling white lights. That article reported that Chloe moved into her new property last November and already began making the place a home, but I'm not too sure. Coco also gave a peek at her master bedroom while cuddling with her daughter and watching TV in bed. 
Her room was painted a neutral beige color with a huge flat screen TV on the wall across from her bed. A cozy fireplace nook was located off to the side with two plush chairs and shelves decked out with family photos. We know that Chloe loves to exercise and not only does she have access to an airy home gym that opens up to the pool, she also has one walk-in closet entirely dedicated to housing her workout gear and outfits. Out comes Sexton in a hurry, north-south of the basket, missed the shot, Thompson follows and Thompson dunks. You know him as Canadian basketball star and fourth overall pick in the 2011 NBA draft by the Cleveland Cavaliers. At the time, he was the highest drafted Canadian born player in NBA history. It's Tristan Thompson. Starting out in Brampton, Ontario, Thompson has went on to win one NBA championship with the Cavs. He began dating reality star Khloe Kardashian in September 2016, and the pair welcomed a daughter, True Thompson, in April 2018. Oh. Good job! Did you make a wish? The six foot nine big man has a net worth of 35 million as of 2020. That may not be a substantial amount compared to the likes of LeBron James or Steph Curry, but there's no denying that Thompson is rolling in the deep. He's currently earning much more than a majority of other players in the NBA. Just because of the history of how tough it's been, I think when you see a team have success, whether it's the Browns, the Cavs, or the Indians, we should support each other. I think it's only right. While most of Thompson's earnings come from his salary from the Cavs, he has secured endorsement deals with the likes of Beats by Dre, Complex, Nike, Moet and Shandon, and Mountain Dew. Brad, you know what I like? He enjoys passing the ball as much as scoring. The second quarter, Thompson takes a lob at the rim, hooks, and scores. All his hard work paid dividends for him in 2015 when he signed a huge extension with the Cavs. Oh, no, it's a great feeling, you know. Uh, you know, they were a family. You know, mm -hmm. we're families and my brothers. Seeing one of your brothers come home and just, you know, just give him a big hug and just, you know, just excited to have him back. This came out to the tune of 82 million for five years. Additionally, he reportedly also pockets 12,000 a month from the Canadian basketball national team. With his big bucks, Tristan Thompson has been able to secure quite the real estate over the years. During the NBA season, Tristan has a nice little pad outside of Cleveland, which has beautiful views of Lake Erie, has more than 6,000 square feet of space, and a perfectly serene outdoor area. The basketball star purchased the extravagant home in 2015 for 1.9 million. The house has five bedrooms, seven bathrooms. The formal living room features a very open and airy concept with amazing views. Great for entertaining. The family room comes with an astonishing view and probably a cozy spot to chill with the view of the frozen lake and roaring fire. The decked out kitchen looks like an absolute gem to prepare a feast and a plan a cool party. Not going to lie, the concrete floor is pretty amazing. I'm telling you, the industrial look is like very trendy right now. The abode comes with a sleek bathroom and while it may not compare to other Cali days, this place is pretty nice. Tristan's home in LA features four bedrooms, four bathrooms, and 3,600 square feet. The house last sold in 2019 for 6.5 million. An estimated value today is still $6.5 million. The estimated mortgage is 31,000 per month. The listing described as truly spectacular gated new construction south of the boulevard provides the ultimate luxury. The wide entry hallway with ultra high ceilings and checkered marble tile welcome you to the dazzling dining room with brass built-in cabinets and a formal living room with marble fireplace and private patio. European and oak wood floors guide you to the sophisticated family room with marble slab fireplace and wooden built-ins. Across is the awe-inspiring kitchen with two black quartz counters, designer appliances, breakfast nook, and all convenience for the gourmet chef. A guest ensuite media room and downstairs laundry room complete the first floor. Take the marble staircase upstairs to the opulent master bedroom with marble fireplace and custom built-ins with wine cooler. The unique design has two separate bathrooms and a walk-in closet on the opposite sides. Both have spa-like marble tiled bathrooms, steam shower, and soaking tub one. The upstairs laundry and three other en suites with walk-in closets complete the second floor. The backyard is exquisite with marble-like stone patio and deck pool oversized spa. Outdoor kitchen with marble counter and black splash with bar counter. Behind the spa, there's a fire pit with built-in seating. What's really dope is a two bedroom and one bathroom pool house with open floor plan, family room, and kitchenette. Accordion doors open both walls for indoor and outdoor entertaining. This stunner is walking distance to Ventura shops, dining, and all that Encino has to offer. Though he bought the LA Mansion barely a year ago following their it's complicated relationship slash breakup with Khloe Kardashian. He did kiss me. My family was ruined. Tristan might love me, whatever that means. He has no respect for me whatsoever. Liar! Tristan Thompson was looking to bounce out of his gated mansion in LA. After Khloe's widely reported relationship with social media's Jordan Woods. I know I'm not the reason 
that Tristan and Chloe are not together. Thompson hung an $8.5 million price tag on the estate, as was first reported by the Daily Mail. That's a big jump above the $6.5 million the 6'9 Canadian originally paid for the extravagant property, though it appears he made a handful of interior customizations during his short tenure. Set well back from the street behind towering trees, the modern farmhouse style structure was built new in 2018 and offers an attached three car garage and a commodious motor court for another half dozen vehicles. The nearly 10,000 square foot manor boasts seven bedrooms and a total of seven and a half bathrooms, including all the latest extravagant amenities buyers at this premium price point have come to expect. Guests will be amazed by the home's soaring foyer, which offers checkerboard marble floors and a thickly veined marble staircase. Immediately inside lies a glam living room upholstered with a sophisticated black and white color palette and a marble fireplace. Across the hall lies an equally decadent formal living room that's paired with an adjoining wine closet. An Eaton kitchen features two islands and top of the line Wolf Sub-Zero appliances and opens to the family room where there's another marble fireplace, built-in wooden bookshelves, and glassy pocket doors that blur the indoor-outdoor boundary between the house and the resort-style backyard. As well, there's a white subway tile backsplash and a unique gold-accented event over the stainless steel stove. Thompson has slightly modified the home's upstairs master retreat with his own sand-colored custom wallpaper, though the bedroom retains its original light fixtures and marble fireplace. There are also dual master baths and closets, plus six additional bedroom suites throughout the main house. Perhaps Thompson's biggest interior switch-up happened in the estate's movie theater, where listing images show he replaced the original gray blue paint with some textured charcoal wallpaper plus a giant velvet couch that can accommodate every member of the Cavs or at least all the Kardashian Jenner family. The property's 43 acre lot is packed with outdoor amenities too including a sleek fire pit, pool, spa and outdoor kitchen with bar seating. At the far rear of the property is a 1500 square foot guest house with its own columned loggia, two bedrooms, full bathroom, family bedroom and a second kitchen. The formal dining room also reimagined by Sagan features a waterfall chandelier light fixture and eye-catching gold cabinetry. Have you ever dreamed of living like Kylie Jenner? Well, the stunning townhome in New York City that Kylie and her boo Travis Scott formerly rented out is now on the market for over 26 million. The couple once lived at this 22 foot wide, nearly 9,000 square foot crib, which is perfect for cozy fall nights, boasting a modern fireplace, soaring ceilings, and other amazing features. Let's not forget that Kylie and Travis also co-own a $13.5 million home above Beverly Hills, and Kylie maintains a collection of homes across LA, including her main residence in Holmby Hills, while Travis is based in Brentwood with his two lavish properties. Today, we're gonna check out where the trendy couple calls home. Kylie Jenner is a media personality, model, businesswoman, and more who rose to fame on the reality series Keeping Up With The Kardashians alongside her family. Not to mention, she's the founder of cosmetic company Kylie Cosmetics and has expanded her brand since. Despite selling the majority of Kylie Cosmetics, she's still behind product development and marketing, and her net worth is now estimated around $700 million. Her partner Travis Scott is a rapper and he's amassed an estimated $50 million himself. With baby number two on the way, Kylie and Travis have a handful of homes they can choose to settle down in. First, let's check out where Kylie and Travis used to stay when they were on the East Coast. Located in the upscale neighborhood of Greenwich Village in New York City, this exclusive townhome has been around for nearly 200 years, being built in 1839. Kylie and Travis were only two of the well-known and well-to-do residents who liked to lease out this home while they were in town, and now it's up for sale at $26.5 million. Million dollar listing star Ryan Serhant is the one who's selling this home, which shouldn't be surprising given its high status, and the impressive six-story structure also includes a decked out rooftop. The townhouse showcases a ton of character from the exposed brick walls to the floor to ceiling windows and much more. At 22 feet wide and 8,700 square feet of space, it's a sprawling residence, fit for celebrity standards, so it's no wonder that Kylie and Travis loved staying here when they were in town. The home had been gutted and renovated by developer and owner William Rainero, while Clora Design were in charge of most of the interiors. Either way, the mansion-sized townhouse combines charm with a modern feel, and it's the best of both worlds. There are six bedrooms and eight bathrooms throughout, as well as plenty of common spaces like the massive living room with double height ceilings, full wall of glass, and contemporary yet cozy fireplace. Sliding doors here also lead out to one of the terraces. 
Most of the spaces in the home have these 18 foot high ceilings, but the exposed original stone and brick adds warmth. There are fancy glass staircases throughout that connect the multiple floors, and while most of the bedrooms are spacious, the master suite is the nicest of them all. Not only does the owner's suite take up the entire fourth floor, here there's another built-in fireplace with flat screen TV and a spacious attached bath with separate tub, double vanities and shower. Elsewhere, there's a huge dressing room as well. If you're too lazy to take the stairs, there's also a glass elevator option and other goodies in the townhouse include a mezzanine lounge as well as a basement with second kitchen and media room. In terms of outdoor spaces, there's a 700 square foot rear garden full of lush landscaping and an outdoor kitchen designed by Silvano Marchetto. Another terrace boasts a hot tub with a nearby wellness room including a glass wall sauna. The luxury townhome is close to Washington Square Park, which you can see from the rooftop deck along with views of the Freedom Tower. Back in 2018, Kylie and Travis also split the bill for a property in Beverly Hills, which they continue to co-own together. This modern abode costs the couple $13.5 million, and it's located within the Beverly Hills Post Office neighborhood of LA, an area that values seclusion and upscale living. Listing materials claim this 1.1 acre property is one of the most private compounds you could find and only minutes from the prestigious Beverly Hills Hotel. The gated residence is contemporary yet warm and offers a separate guest house on the grounds with its own kitchen, living room, bedroom and bathroom. Inside the main mansion, the home spans over 9,600 square feet of space with 7 bedrooms, 10 baths and a handful of perfectly decorated living spaces. Built back in the 1970s, this property was once upon a time owned by actress Louise Curry, but received a huge renovation quite recently, making the house fit for modern times. It also gave the Beverly Hills spread more of a contemporary aesthetic. The boxy exterior opens into a double height foyer, which then leads to the open plan living spaces. The living room, dining room, family room and kitchen all open via glass walls to outdoor spaces for the ideal indoor-outdoor flow. The living room is cozy and chic with European oak floors and a fireplace while the chef's kitchen offers top of the line appliances, oversized center island and attached breakfast nook. Not to mention there's a bonus outdoor breakfast area as well. The luxury master suite is definitely a selling point, spending about 2,300 square feet alone with both city and ocean views. There are his and hers baths for Travis and Kylie as well as oversized dressing rooms for each. Other features on this level of the mansion include a separate gym and massage room, sitting room and a private office where the beauty mogul can sign some Kylie cosmetic deals. As you might expect, that breathtaking master suite also opens up to a large private balcony. Other features in Travis and Kai's Beverly Hills home include a movie theater, wine room, library and an extra den. So basically this house has it all. While interiors are impressive, some might say the backyard is the feature of this mansion. The large sleek pool and spa seem to cover most of the yard space, while the surrounding patio makes for a great area to lounge or entertain. The landscaping is also second to none at this crib, not only offering beautiful gardens, but thick walls of trees and greenery make for a ton of extra privacy. As the listing described it, Kylie and Travis's shared home is a warm and timeless compound with unmatched privacy. While it may seem like just an investment property or backup crib for the young couple, in the past, Kylie has opened up about her and Travis's living situation, saying, I'm actually scrolling through Instagram right now and it says that me and Travis don't live together. And so I just want to say that we never miss a night with each other. We go back and forth from my Calabasas house and the city home that we actually got together. This was a while back, so now I would assume that Kylie and Travis can split their time between her main Homeby Hills mansion, his super modern home in Brentwood, or this place. Of course, Kylie spends most of her time at her $36.5 million compound in Homeby Hills. We know the girl loves her real estate, but this resort style spot is the largest property in Kylie's portfolio thus far, spanning over 15,300 square feet of space, along with four separate guest houses and a 24-hour guardhouse with full bath and kitchen. The main mansion here boasts 7 beds and 14 baths over a single level with an open plan layout, 
soaring ceilings, and massive walls of retractable glass to connect the indoors and outdoors. The amenities at Kylie's Pad are endless, with multiple bars and games rooms, as well as a massive indoor home theater and an outdoor projection screen. The main courtyard and infinity pool are located at the center of the property, and most of the common rooms open right up to the space as well. Elsewhere, there's a gym, a spa, modern fire pit, basketball court, and multiple terraces. Over in the Brentwood neighborhood of LA, Travis has his own oasis, yet another option for the young family to spend their days at. Just last year, the rapper dropped over $23 million on this unique home that looks like a yacht and is wrapped in smooth sheet metal. The mansion is huge, clocking in 16,700 square feet of ultra-modern house with 7 beds and 11 baths with a generous outdoor area spanning an acre. Some of the many features at Travis's home include a lounge deck, a 75 foot long glass tiled infinity pool, Japanese zen garden, and 300 tree fruit orchard. Inside the home is full of open spaces with high ceilings and luxury add-ons like a live green wall that acts as a natural air purifier and a single great room with full bar, fireplace, and multiple seating and dining areas. This mega estate is at the end of a remote street, below street level, and the driveway actually slopes down the mansion's roof, while the roof has parking spaces for 15 cars on its own. Definitely a one-of-a-kind type of design. Some other amenities at Travis's house include a home theater, three custom-designed bars, a glass elevator, and an impressive master retreat with dedicated lounge areas. Kendall Jenner and her basketball player Bo certainly make a more low-key couple than her sisters and their partners. Kendall is well known for shying away from the limelight compared to the rest of the Kardashian-Jenner clan, and she has a tranquil Los Angeles home to retreat to when the public eye gets to be just too much. Her boyfriend, Suns All-Star Devin Booker on the other hand, has a modern estate in Phoenix, Arizona, but it said he's traded that in for another property. Well, that leaves us to wonder if a couple has decided to shack up together now. Kendall Jenner is a model, reality star, influencer, and more who rose to fame starring alongside her famous family in the reality series Keeping Up With The Kardashians. At the time of this recording, her net worth is at an estimated $45 million or more. And while her real estate portfolio may not be as active as her sister Kylie's, she still owns a drop-dead gorgeous home in Mulholland Estates that has quite the Hollywood history. Kendall has been seeing her boyfriend NBA star Devin Booker since last year, and while the pair tries to lay low, it seems they're happy together. Devin is an all-star basketball player on the Phoenix Suns, and he's quickly rising to the top of his game, amassing a reported fortune of over $26 million already. In 2017, he treated himself by purchasing a contemporary crib in Phoenix, but more recently, Devin apparently sold that home and upgraded. First, let's take a look at Devin's home. The young NBA All-Star purchased a stunning house back in 2017, located in the community of Kachina Estates in Phoenix, Arizona. He put the house on the market last February after starting his five-year, $158 million extension with the Suns, and it sold in October 2020 for $3.45 million. According to property records, Devin scored the Paradise Valley area home for $3.25 million, and it had only been built a year prior. Not to mention, listing photos show his contemporary crib looks like it's barely been lived in. The sleek and custom estate is a desert oasis spanning over 5,500 square feet of space on a one acre lot. It boasts a boxy exterior with a gated entry and four car garage, while interiors are comprised of state of the art finishes. Glass front doors lead you into an open floor plan made up of multiple rooms to entertain or kick back and relax. The impressive living room has soaring ceilings as well as a double height modern fireplace side by side to a built in flat screen TV. This space attaches to a cozy private office on one side, while the other wall is floor to ceiling retractable glass that opens to the yard. Both the chef's kitchen and that great room overlook the covered patio and dining space for indoor outdoor flow. 
The kitchen brings in wood accents for the cabinets and built-ins to complement all of the white aesthetic in the home. Here there's also an Eden Island, breakfast nook and nearby, a formal dining room with wine storage and a butler's pantry no less. Elsewhere Devon's former abode had a home movie theater as well as an exercise or bonus room. The master suite was large and had a spa style attached bath with walk-in glass shower and double vanities as well as a custom dressing room with built-ins ready to be filled with designer outfits, shoes and accessories. Finally, the retractable glass doors on the main floor lead out to the sprawling backyard. There's a sleek pool, a spa and multiple lounge areas back here. While he may have sold this house, Devin allegedly isn't going anywhere. It's said he moved into a newer, much bigger home in Paradise Valley a while ago, and he hasn't lived in this house we looked at since he listed it. While he and Kendall may spend a lot of time together, word is that the couple hasn't moved in together yet. But where do they shack up when they're in LA? Well, I'm just gonna take a wild guess here and say Kendall's peaceful estate, which she purchased in 2017 for $8.55 million. The Spanish style mini mansion is tucked away on a private street behind the guarded gates of Mulholland Estates on just under an acre of land. As you likely know, Mulholland Estates is a celebrity favorite, so Kendall's home also has a Hollywood history. The house formerly belonged to none other than actor Charlie Sheen, but the model has since changed the interiors to fit her personality. Kendall's crib has a completely different vibe than her sister's homes, that's for sure. She told Architectural Digest, I like a house that has character. When I walked into this place, I was immediately drawn to the peaceful, Spanishy, farmhousey vibe. My life involves a lot of chaos and travel and high energy, so I wanted a home that feels serene, a place where I can simply zone out and relax. And it would appear that Kendall achieved these goals. Her home spans 6,625 square feet of space and is jam-packed with amenities like a tranquil courtyard, an art studio, and much more, along with five beds and six baths. Kendall had a preference for neutral colors and a bohemian vibe when designing her home, alongside designers Waldo Fernandez and Kathleen and Tommy Clements. Kendall made a few structural changes to the house too, including changing two of the bedrooms into a pair of glam and fitting rooms. I mean, what girl wouldn't want to do that? I sure would. The Mediterranean style house boasts a welcoming courtyard with fountain to set the tone for what's to come, and inside there's a split level floor plan throughout. There's a large dining room Kendall decked out with a wooden table, an office, a family room, and fully equipped gourmet kitchen. Kendall transformed the kitchen into a dreamy space with marble countertops, teal colored cabinets, and a large island, which is good because apparently she likes to cook. I'm gonna bet she's made a romantic dinner for Devon or two here. My kitchen. This is most definitely the most used room in the house. Every single day and night I make dinner with my friends most of the time. There's also a media room which opens to the yard as well as an office space with fireplace connected to a breezy walkway and the courtyard. This is my office area. I hang in here with the people I work with a lot of the time. To my nice little courtyard out here which is also one of my favorite places in the world. The main living space best showcases Kendall's style, offering warm and organic textures with earthy tones. Hey, I guess formal living room. I made sure there was no TVs in here, so we get into a little... There are soaring beam ceilings along with a wall of arched French doors to outside and a large cozy fireplace. Furnishings are plush and comfortable with two sofas and a soft white rug underfoot. Kendall doesn't like to throw parties. She prefers a more low-key vibe, saying, I like turning on music, lighting the fireplace and candles, and watching NBA games with my friends. Off of a bar area in her home, there's a dark toned powder room with a 300 pound sink looking like part of a cliff to keep with that earthy vibe. At the time of purchase, there was an outdated movie theater decked out in an all red design. Some may call it tacky, but I thought it had character. Anyways, Kendall opted to transform the space into something new altogether, an art studio. Kendall's master suite offers more beamed ceilings and a large luxurious bed. Other features here include glass doors to the outside space, a sitting area with fireplace, and an impressive ensuite bath. Her bathroom actually had one of the biggest makeovers of all. They expanded the shower to twice its original size and added glass to give it an open feel, 
also fully raising the ceilings. We also can't miss the massive brass tub she has. It's a statement piece to say the least. Like I previously mentioned, two of the bedrooms were also turned into a dressing room and glam room, which I think was a great transformation, while the nearby powder room boasts some of Kendall's framed magazine covers. Outside, Kendall's backyard is protected by trees, offering extensive privacy. Amenities include a stunning pool and spa, a large lawn, and plenty of alfresco lounge areas. Thanks to the home's shape, many of the rooms have glass doors that open to the outdoor area as well for easy access. All right, so they may not have purchased the home together yet, but we got to see where Kendall Jenner and her boo, Devin Booker, call home. While I'm not sure of the new property that Devin snagged in Paradise Valley, I'm sure it's even more impressive than the one he recently sold. While it looks like his home wasn't even used much, I'm gonna guess he doesn't get much home time during the basketball season, and in the off season, he's likely spending a lot of time at Kendall's place in Mulholland Estates. Which of the two homes did you prefer? I think Kendall's redesign retreat says a lot about her personality and it has more of a down to earth and homey vibe than most of her sister's homes do. Even Devon's former estate was far more modern than Kendall's. Both of the properties are gorgeous, but I'm gonna have to choose Kendall's and I especially loved her main living room and the glam room. However, I would have kept the red movie theater. Be sure to let me know what you liked or didn't like about Kendall and Devin's homes down in the comments or if there's a new home the couple is shacking up at. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.